I'd like to offer you a story. And I've titled it The Most Majestic Catch One Could Imagine. So here it goes. I went fishing one day in the pure crystal clear still water. And I took the world along with me. The three of us appearing as one whole. We reeled in the most precious catch. Infinite reeling of the most majestic catch one could imagine. Through complete adoration for this catch, I, me and the world began giving each fish a name. The moment it was born from the still water. Very soon, I, me and the world had reeled in infinite fish, each giving it a title relevant to its presence, its beauty. One particular immense fish I, me and the world, caught. We called it the universe. Well, fortunately, as it was being reeled in, it gave birth. within the reeling. Billions of spawn, which I, me, and the world gave names, like time, anger, joy, love, forms, space, etc. All that appeared, regardless of its quality and size, was named. Even when no fish came, I, me, and the world named it meditation and deep sleep. I, me, and the world, as this fisherman, was truly happy. When every fish fell to the side of I, me, and the world. All of this for I, me, and the world to explore and possibly devour. In time, very soon, all the fish that could ever be imagined lay all around I, me, and the world. Very suddenly, with no warning, through an imagined mind, in some conscious living event, the fish began to shake themselves down, looking around in bewilderment and with instinctive mind wondered what purpose they had on being pulled onto this river bank? Who caught us and why? Why are we here? For what purpose? Surely the states in that in which we have appeared mean we are only useful and edible to the one that caught us, to the fishermen. I, me and the world. And we are worthless without the fishermen. Collectively, each fish began the search for the fishermen. I, me and the world. They looked everywhere on the riverbank, into the skies, through each other's unique appearing state. But no one could find the fishermen, I, me and the world. They began to enjoy this searching, building places, setting up homes, taking their time, and very slowly forgetting why they were caught, for what purpose, and who and where this fisherman was. They began to breed amongst themselves. Stars, creating more starfish. Planets, creating more planetfish. Humans, creating more humanfish. 
an experience breeding experience fish. Every fish breeding with its own each unique state fish. All was going well until some of the smaller fish got very naughty. The anglerfish began breeding with the happy fish. Anglerfish wanted to see and become and experience what happiness is. So it breeded with happiness. Joyfish started breeding with sadness fish to fulfill its desire and curiosity. And so this went on and on. And very soon the fish became unbalanced, took illness and began suffering. The true to their state fish, the pure fish began protecting these naughty fish. And they started caring for this mixed up breed of fish and surrounded them all to keep them bound, protect them. And very soon, collectively, this pure fish began giving birth to imagined fish. These fish were named as hope and belief. And from these new imagined fish, they gave the pure fish some sort of power, controlling a type of false resurrection for the unfortunate ones to possibly return to their original state. Realizing that they were losing the battle and that this interbreeding had reached a contagious state, the universe fish gave up on the lost and imbalanced fishes and simply prayed to the fishermen, I, me and the world. They prayed with the hope of finding an answer. Only the fishermen, I, me and the world, can save us. The imbalanced ones also decided this. We must find whoever caught us and reeled us into this land. So a few states of fish gave up their new life and began searching everywhere for I me and the world. They used all types of methods and called in the science fish, the religion fish. They thought we must put our minds out and search and see, seek help from these other fish to help us find the fishermen, I, me and the world. This need of sacrificing, this need of finding, would offer a type of sacrifice. So they could either be eaten or simply explained why they had been reeled in here. Whichever. It mattered not, suffering was so bad. They would seek a reasonable answer from the fishermen, an explanation from I, me and the world. The methods involved mainly climbing up the rod, following its rod onto land to find the fishermen. I me and the world. They wanted to find the fishermen what he assumed also had a body. If the fish had bodies 
then the catcher must also be of this body state, they said. But it began to get tough as this tiny fish climbing on their own, crawling, sliding up the thick end of the rod to the fat end to find the fisherman's hands. Now they had all became so small, so desperate, insignificant, tiny, slipping and sliding, and eventually falling off. Start again. One fish, called Surrender, decided to act on its pure state and turned around, living up to its name and giving up, totally surrendering to what will be. This fish, with no effort, slid back down the rod and plunged back into the water, of which it had forgotten it had come from. And just before it entered the water, it saw its own reflection. On this mirror-like water, this fish clearly saw what it was. The shock of this caused it to scream, an echoing pulse that remained forever in the whole existing land and space, forever and ever, above, around, below, and within every single thing. It screamed one moment. As these two worlds began to fade in and out, pulsating infinitely through the whole existence, many from wherever they were on whatever place in the rod they were dwelling, held the words in a language their own heart could understand. Every fish began discussing the fate of the surrendered fish. In each, their own language would take what was held, and their personal reaction would be considered and then choice would be made, either disregarding as foolish or simply unachievable what this fish had done. They would question their worthiness in comparison to this surrendering fish. This questioning was due to their name, shape, form, size, quality, and where they had been placed on the rod by the other fish, who appeared to be superior, further up this thick rod. They were closer to the fishermen, I, me and the world. So they could look back an ego at these unworthy one. Simply each uniquely differing type of fish tried to understand using their emerging mindset they had created by themselves what it was like to surrender. and why they were not good enough. The human fish understood the surrendered fish's scream to be in these words. This one moment had faded all over the world, 
all over the universe this pulsating scream and this is what the human fish understood these worlds to be the surrendered fish had shouted on this shock I am me I am I me and the world I am the fisherman some their interpretation was they heard we are all I me and the world we are all collectively together the fishermen whatever their interpretation was all of the world's heard or a type of truth but with work to do using the words using these words to inquire the ultimate truth fortunately a few with clear hearing heard this as the ultimate truth this was the world that was held. The water where we came from is the true fisherman as ourselves. The reeling into land is simply a reflection of what we truly are. The exact opposite of what we imagine. The reeling in is actually the reeling out of ourself. Just for a momentary imagined glimpse of what we can temporarily, temporarily become. Every fish heard the scream and the surrendered fish and every word in whatever language it heard it as. The fisherman I, me and the world now knows that the way to truth is to return to this pure crystal clear water by dropping the rod and diving into the depth of our own still water. To follow this surrendering fish. You see the rod is the thought body. It is named I. It is a vessel appearing as the thought of catching something. When the rod is dropped, the body remains. But the thought of I, me, and the world is. This body is gone forever. And everything appears on its own as it is. It's simply the thought Of this rod, this eye, this body, that you cannot detach from it. The thought of clinging on is what is causing the suffering. The rod must be dropped, but not the physical. Right. The thought that I, me, and the world is the rod, or holding the rod, or realizing that the rod is really what is catching the fish. Are the fish not jumping out the water voluntarily? The surrendered fish, like any of the other fish, did not do anything physical. And with any effort, it simply realized that it was going the wrong way. Stopped. Forgot about fishing. The forgetting about fishing instantly removed the idea. It was a body. And with no movement, turned around to see its reflection as the body of the whole still water. 
when it turned around, the water itself, the surrendered fish, seeing itself as its true state, screamed with joy. Beautiful, enlightening, liberating worlds released in realization. A celebration that it had not been forgotten as what it truly is. The water. The still water, where we are never not looking from, is home. We, every single state, every single fish, every single emotion, sense, experience, every single universe, cosmos, slug, human, action, star, collectively, as one, are the Father. The Father is the home. The home is the Father. We are that. The surrendered one is also imagined to be one as Christ. But this Christ, like us all, is still with the water. Still unmoving with the water. Reflectively residing as the here state. I am here. As does Buddha, Shiva and all who surrendered in the scream. All who have followed the scream, recognized the words, gave up, surrendered. The thought of this body being home. The revelation of realizing the body is simply a vessel. It's simply overcome. This scream is this continuous pulse. There is no beginning and end. And this Christ state, Buddha state, Shiva state, Ramana state, and all who have surrendered in this state live on as this scream that calls us to its bosom every time moment. In your core heart lies the truth. It reveals the rod, the purpose of the rod, as a body to see where you are, who you are, and where you're tr truly looking from, and as what. This rod is connected to the line, and through the line is the umbilical cord to your true self. And the point it connects with the water is the point where life took place, where God gave birth to itself through becoming conscious. The point is yourself. The point is this one moment. Anything that arises from this one moment is temporary. Any fish that comes must go. Beyond the point where the water breaks in its stillness is the permanent. You are there now. Whatever I or you appear to be, I or you am not. And wherever I or you am not, I or you am. 
but in both eyes. I and you are never not there. So where can I and you go? Seek within the only fisherman that resides outside this water. This one is named I, me, and the world. These are imagined thoughts that keep you a prisoner from your truth and appearing here as this fish. But if you follow these precious words of I and me and the world, which the surrendered fish left you with, gifted you with these words, through me, I is the way. Take these words, take them personally as this gift. Seek as the fisherman through yourself, through I and me. And through your inner self, this truth is simply one moment away. No end. <laughs>